see me. It's all smoke and mirror. Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. Today I will show you how to play LeBlanc. So you want to be starting with your W because that is like your main damaging ability that is also your wave clear. Um, so what it does is that the first cast will make you dash and then you deal AoE damage where you land and then if you recast that ability then you go straight back. The so early game, you have that one attack speed shard because your auto attacks Will be used a lot in the landing phase so it helps you a lot with the poking i like to set up a slow push into the tower and then i try to crash the entire wave when i do that then i can freely poke the enemy under their own tower now normally you try to walk up you auto attack then you press w and then you auto attack again for a free execute proc but since it is a fist and he most likely started his c that's why i'm not just spamming it off cooldown. Your Q guys, single target damaging ability that will mark the opponent and then you can proc that mark by damaging them with any of the other abilities to deal bonus damage. So that is like your main um, combo is that you try to initiate with your Q and then you follow up with any of your other abilities to deal a lot of burst damage. Then you have your E, which is your chain. Um, you hit the target, you deal damage, and then if they stay within range, then they will get rooted. And it also gives you true sight of the target, so if you hit somebody who's invisible, then they will be revealed. Now the good thing about this E ability, guys, is the fact that it has such a long range, so if you use it, in melee range and they flash out then they will still be within range so it's very hard to avoid it of course you want to keep maxing that w first and that is because you want to make sure that you also have wave clear so you have like damage mobility and wave clear in one ability now on leblanc in the landing phase your goal is to get uh, short trades So you prog electrocute and then you back off Just wait um, he has his E up so I'm not going in all the way He did cancel his recall, so we can look for a kill here. I uh, just need to bait out his C first. And another benefit is also really hard to gank this champ because of the mobility, so that also makes it really good in the lane. And she did get buffed recently, so Cam is actually pretty strong right now. Also need to be careful with the uh, mana use. Um, we do have Corrupting Potion and Delivery Biscuit, so there's a lot of sustain, but we still don't want to be spamming the abilities. Just make sure that you weave in auto attacks in the early game. Nice. Um, yeah, so that is the fist one trick, but it's harder to react to if you flash first, so that's another cool thing. So we got level 6, so the ultimate will mimic the latest ability we used. 
Normally you want to be doing a W into your ult to wave clear. And that's also your bursting combo in the early game, but later on, um, when you have enough levels, then you can do the uh, Q into ult for a lot of burst damage. But in the early game, then your W into ult has the most amount of damage, and it's also your wave clear combo. Normally when I base then I would get a Dark Seal and a Lost Chapter, but because I have so much gold then it's a lot better to get the Lost Chapter. You get a lot of mana regen, you get all the stats you need for the laning phase, so it's very good to have early on. And the chains, the thing is, Fizz is very mobile, right? So if you blind use your W, then he's just gonna E it, and then he's gonna return damage to you. So you want to be careful using that. Then to mobile champs, then you can go for the chains first. You try to hit them with the chains, so you root them, and then you can use the W. Okay, he should not have gank from the uh, back because he can just do that, he can just dash into him and then hop out. But yeah, uh, when you want to push of course try to hit the entire wave with your W. And then the tank is minion you can mark with your Q so your W will deal extra damage when you proc that mark and if you have your ultimate up then you can also do a quick W into ult onto the wave. You want to push waves fast and roam or recall. There you go, hit the chain, um, that's what you want to do, and then of course you can use your abilities to dodge You see as well. You can see that he does have pretty long range, but Fizz has like double gap closer, so he is able to get out sometimes, but if you're on melee range, then even he should not be able to get out. Can look for a kill here. Go. Of course, that W makes it so hard to hit you with any kind of skill shot whatsoever, so that's why it's really good, but it's also really hard to play it. I can't really help them in the river here, because I'm really low HP and Kaiser is just gonna one-shot me with a single auto attack, so... Which looks like he survived. She does have a W up, I think, so I need to be careful of that. Nice, alright, so we can go ahead and recall. So these spaces I'm getting are pretty... Um, they're not normal base timers because I have a lot of gold. Uh, normally I want to get that Dark Seal early on, but because I'm able to buy the item components towards Student Seiko, that's why I'm opting for the uh, Lost Chapter and then Blasting Mount. But you definitely want the Dark Seal though, because it is a snowball champ, so if you end up getting a lot of kills, then you can upgrade to the Magi's. So snowball even harder, and then you can use that to look to end the game with. And remember guys, your passive, um, it doesn't deal any damage, but you can control the clone. Um, it can do the auto attack animation, but it does not deal any damage, so it's mainly to catch the opponent off guard as soon as it's being used, so you can avoid taking a lot of damage, but 
Other than that, it doesn't really, really do much. You also go invisible, like, for a very, very short duration, so that also works, but... Not used for damage. But yeah, especially in these matchups, you want to be careful. When they're mobile, then you want to try to hit the chain first, your E. Because then you root them in place, and then you can hit your Q and W. But if you're playing against immobile champs, then you can go for that Q, W, auto attack poke, and then just back off. A lot of the times what I'm trying to do in this matchup is I want to bait out the C first, and then... I try to predict him queuing in, right here, and then I uh, try to like time my chain with it, so if I hit him, then he will not be able to E out. Oh nice kill by Jace. He's probably still dead though. So, unfortunate. But he's doing really good topside, so that's great for us as well. I think is, if you want better way clear, uh, you want to one shot the backline minions, then you can also use the minion dematerializer. Um, you switch uh, biscuits out for those. That's also fine to do. But this sh setup I'm using right here is really good for the lane and also the later stages because you get permanent mana from the biscuits, so that does fix some of the issues. And also it gives her a stronger laning phase, which is where she's supposed to snowball. It is an AP assassin, so you want to get ahead, but she actually also skills really well. And since it is an assassin, you want to pick her into squishy teams. Because she's reliant on burst damage, she does not have consistent damage. She's good at shutting people down. Setting people up for ganks and bursting people, so squishy teams are the best. And champs you want to ban when playing with Bonk. Um, Kassadin is a hard counter, of course he's an anti-mage, anti-AP champ. Galio can also be good, because you have no kill pressure in lane against them and they just can outscale you, so... They are good bans. But a lot of the AP or Assassin matchups are skill matchups, so something you can learn to play around. Right, we got the Luna's Tempo, now we can go ahead and get the Dark Seal. It is late, but as I said earlier on, it's because I had so much gold previously that I could just buy the components. Otherwise, I would have went for the Dark Seal earlier because then I will be sitting on a lot of stacks right now. Morgana's dead 100%, she's not making it out. I'm not gonna bother going towards the bottom side. And they should be safe from fist, so I want to punish this guy, so I need to push. I'm not gonna take this control ward, I need to push this into the tower, so he loses something. Okay, they got the Drake, but... Oh, he used the C. If he ever uses C, guys, then that's why you want to be punishing him. Nice ult. And we can easily get out, that's why it's so fun to play the Blong in the mid lane. Because she's strong in 1 vs 1, and she's also super mobile, so it's almost impossible to gank her. Right, flashes down, we can just keep chasing him. Just gonna wait for another usage of a W. As you can see, it is on a pretty low cooldown because we are maxing it. That's why it's so good to max first. Because you get like everything in one ability. And especially the wave clearing part is so important. Because if you don't have wave clear as a mid laner, they will just keep showing you in because you usually play against an assassin or a mage. 
And if you get showed in, then you don't have any kill pressure because you're stuck under the tower the entire game. And if you don't have kill pressure as an AP assassin, then you get outskilled. Jace needs to go mid right now. I don't know why he's headed top side because we are pushing top, so that's nothing for him to take. If he goes mid, then he has a wave, right? So that's a questionable move by him. We got the first tower. That's perfect. I'm not gonna take the rip off right here because I don't have any mana, so I want to catch this wave if possible. And he used to see. Um, the thing is, this is see is also his wave clearing ability. So what I did is I just waited in the brush. I knew he would use his C to clear out the wave with. Wait for him to use it, and then you can go in, and that's a one hundred percent kill. If you can get this herald to push another tower, we just need to wave clear this really fast. I also need to recall because I don't have any mana. Oh, that's a nice hit by Morgana. Hell died, but we got a kill and we have a lot of gold. So we can upgrade it to Majas now. And we can also get the Sock Shoe. So this is like a perfect base. Because we got that kill right there. Remember, Majas Soul Stealer is only something you want if you're snowballing. And it's actually good to buy on AP Assassins like the Blanc most of the time because you need to snowball with these champs and if you have this item then you normally play a lot more carefully because you get punished so hard if you die, right? So that's a good item to buy just to learn how to play properly without running it down all the time because it punishes you so hard if you end up dying. Yeah, if you're not snowballing, then at this point you could buy a Rebellion's death cap and just use ult out. Yes, and he doesn't have anything. Yeah, Thresh was waiting on the other side for me to uh, recast my W or my ultimate, so good thing I did not do that. But yeah, at this stage, when the mid game starts, you want to be hovering around your teammates. You want to be trying to look for flanks, so you get that um, sweeper that's really important to so clear out the vision, and then you try to engage from the sides. You don't want to go in from the front unless someone is so extended. Nice hit again. I'm not using my chain here because I just wait for him to use his E and then I can just hop in. But of course, one issue a lot of people have on LeBlanc is that they fall really far behind in CS. It is normal that you don't see us as well as you would do on a mage like a. Um, you know, Vilkos, Serath, Six, and so on, because they have extremely good wave clearing abilities. Just try to go to the sideline when possible, just pick up the waves with a W alt combo, and then you rotate back to your teammates. They're doing the drakes, I'm just gonna hover around them, I pushed out that wave, and then I just rotate, and if nothing happens, then I can walk back into the lane. So just gonna walk back now, cause uh, no fight is starting, so this is what you want to do. To make sure you don't fall super far behind in CS, you just rotate back and forth all the time and then you catch the waves when they push it out to you. So we can go ahead and recall, we have 10 stacks on our metas and we can get the large rod as well. Let's see if somebody walks up. I want to push out this wave here because otherwise it's going to um Fish could have uh, if he stayed then he could crash this wave into our tower and then we will lose the bottom side tower so push out this wave 
Now we have enough enough for a large rod. I'm just gonna go straight into Rapid and Stealth Cap. If they had any MR at this point, if the squishy ones had MR, then I'll go for the Void Staff. To make a pick here, then we can do the Baron, and then we can use that to end the game with. Nice, initiate with a chain. Your chain combos are also really good in teamfights, guys. Really, really good in teamfights because you have double chains, so you can shut someone down completely. And if you have Everfrost, then you're sacrificing some damage, but then you have even more CC, so Leblanc becomes this bot where you use that double chain into Everfrost, and no one will be able to escape. They're doing the Baron right now, but people are getting, yeah, they're getting caught on the other side, so I have to help them out. Normally when you engage from the side, guys, you want to be using your dub, um, double, you want to mimic your W. Because that's like your mobility, so you get that extra gap closing range. But for burst, you want to use Q into R. And then you follow up with your W or your E, whatever you have up. Okay, Jace is alive, so that's fine. They also need some help with the Baron. I wanted to help them early on, but people got caught, so... I had to try to save them, but we got the Baron in the end, so that's fine. And Jace also survives. Okay, I guess he's dead then. Oh wow, okay, nice shield. Oh, he died. Okay, we got the Elisto and Fizz lost his ultimate, so he has no kill pressure anymore. But yeah, if you build raw AP items, uh, like the large rod, then you can see the work clear becomes even better. Your W is just gonna one-shot everything in the backline, so... That's why all... A lot of times I just prioritize getting the Majas into Rabadon Stealth Cap. Of course that also gives you the highest burst damage possible, so... You'll be able to one-shot Squishy Champs as well. Even if you won't hit your third ability guys, often you can just hop in with your W and then you can do a quick Q plus R. Onto the squishy champ and maybe get an auto tag off and then you can back off. That also deals a lot of damage and almost one shots them. Oh he got caught. Okay. Yeah he's dead. We can't help him. I'm just gonna back off here. Because I'm sitting on a massive gold bounty so I do not want to get caught at this point. Nice, we hit Thresh with the entire combo, and now we have enough for the Rabbit and Death Cap. So this is like a god tier power spike we have right now, once we recall get that item as well. I'm gonna one shot everyone in this game. Almost got Elise as well. That's the like nice shields we have from Ivan. Actually just saved me from giving away that free go bounty. So I'm gonna take the blue buff and then we can go ahead and recall. We definitely need to recall so we can get the rabbit and stuff cap. So yeah, you get this item, you get the rabbit and stuff cap, and then you start to carry. You need to carry at this point. Um, you have a lot of damage. Just group with your team. Uh, find the squishy one, one shot them, take the objectives and then try to end. Also got a blue pot here because I think this will be over uh, with the next push so that's why I'm just getting as much damage as possible.
We just go uh, towards the bottom side. And there's a fight going on. They should not be taking this fight, but this is the only way they can uh, do something. They need to try to catch us because we are way too far ahead. Yeah, our support is mid lane, I don't know why. We're just gonna push bottom side. Look to break open the base here. Take the inhibitor and then we need to back off because they all spawned. We do not want to keep pushing. Uh, that's a really bad idea and that's also how you throw. Go mid here and pick up that wave as well. Now both side is open so we don't want to go bottom anymore. There's nothing for us to take so we need to go mid or top. Just go top as well, pick up that wave. And Fizz is top side, so that's a free kill. Fizz one trick, not doing so well this game. Hit the chain, and he missed his ultimate once again. Just go top, we don't see the rest of that team, so I also need to watch out. Yeah, wave clean feels really good when you have a lot of AP. Easy to one shot the waves, no struggles right there, don't need to waste time having to auto tag everything. I'm gonna look to deny them everything possible. Um, it's important that you try to take away the jungle camps as well whenever possible. So I also set the enemy jungler behind. Alright, we can just look to end here. Mid is open. I'm gonna take the tower and then we can just hit make, uh, hit back mid because they have a wave. So nice, and we should be able to end it right here. Oh, that's close. Oh, he got. Did he? Yeah, he got the shutdown. That's unfortunate. First death of the game, but yeah. That was still a blank video, so I hope this was useful. As always, see you guys in the next one.